Well, now we're ready for the next episode in our 6SQ7 amplifier build. And I know I was said that, okay, this time we're going to put the cathode power resistors or the cathode grounding resistors, cathode bias resistors, whatever you want to call them, on the underside of the amplifier. I just can't do it, guys. I... As much as I understand the, the safety concerns that, peop that people have, that just goes against my whole logic of putting something that runs that hot underneath the ch chassis with all of those electrolytic capacitors and other devices that can be damaged by heat. And given that there's really nothing else under there creating heat except for these resistors, I just can't put them under there. And so we're going to mount them up here on the top of the chassis. And they're going to sit right there behind the two power tubes. The center will be the common negative, And then each end will go to the cathode of each of these EL34s. Going to drill holes on in the behind with a grommet to run the wire through. These are actually a lot smaller, even though they're rated at 10 watts, these are a lot smaller than the previous ones I used that were some, you know, eBay specials. But again, they're rated for 10 watts, get them bolted down with some heat sink compound, and I know they'll be fine, especially out here where they can get some air. One thing I did run into though is these holes in these are tiny, and I had to find some little number two Allen bolts to hold these down, which are pretty small hardware, but I did find, I've got a great hardware store near me that had some number two quarter inch long button head Allen bolts, which are going to look great. The nuts are silver, which I wasn't crazy about, but they're on the underside, you don't see them, so... But what I want to explain, too, is what we want to do next in this build. And let me go ahead and flip the amp over. So the next thing we need to do in this amplifier is wire up the current drawing part of the output tubes. So we're going to figure out where we're going to put the... We know where we're going to put the resistors. They're going to be seeing the holes, the wires for them are going to come through right here. Likely going to put a tag strip here off of this bolt that holds down the output transformer. And then we're going to have to run the power for the output transformers. So I'm thinking about running those over here to one of the lugs on the tag strip, on maybe the one on this end and then run a single wire over here, go across these heaters, maybe you know a couple of inches up in the air from this, and then over to our B+. Plus. Then these two wires are going to go to the plates. These two are going to go to the ultralinear taps. Then we're going to have these are the cathodes. We have to tie pin 1 and 8 together and then run a wire from wherever we connect those together up here to the cathode resistors. And then we need to also ground the grid leak resistor and we can power these output tubes up. The reason we want to do that before we go any further forward is these are the highest current drawing part of the amplifier. And by powering these up and getting the current running through them, we can then accurately see what our B plus is going to be. So the next thing we're going to do is mount the cathode resistors and I think that's the last holes we're going to have to drill in the amp 
and I think I'm going to meet my goal of not having any extraneous bolts on the top of this amplifier, that everything's going to be held in place by components that are bolted down on the top. So we won't have just a random bolt hole or a random Allen bolt stuck in the top of the amp. And I just, I think that looks so much cleaner. So let's jump on that, get those mounted, get the wires run through, and start wiring up these output tubes. So like I said, I'm going to mount these cathode power resistors up on the top deck right behind the power tubes. And I want to leave enough room between the tag strip that I'm going to put off one of these two bolts here to put capacitors and stuff on the underside. So I want to mount them right up in here. I want to keep the heat away from these output transformers too. And these holes are so small, it's going to be really difficult to get in there and try to center punch them. So I'm going to come in here Hold this down, get a drill bit the same size as the hole. And mark the hole. And I messed up earlier and got that one right there. So we're using this hole, this outer hole here. Let me zoom in here. We're using this, this front hole. So I want to go ahead and drill this first hole. Get that drilled all the way through. Then I want to get one of the little bolts that are going to hold this down. And put it through the hole here to locate that first hole. Like that. And like I said, I'm going to have the, the two centers are going to be connected together to, to make the ground. And then the cathode of each tube will go on the end here. So the next thing I want to do is get this as straight across as I can. And there is a little bit of wiggle room here to move this around, so it doesn't have to be just absolutely perfect but we want to hold that down and then start the second hole get that marked and then hold this back up see if that still looks that looks still looks fairly straight and then drill the second hole. And the other, the other reason not to get this too far back, and I didn't even realize it until I was trying to drill that, is the chuck will get into the output transformer. We don't want that. So let's see if these two holes line up and like most things there's a little bit of slop here in the because there's a little flange here I mean there's not a lot but there's a little bit of slop here where if we have to slot these holes out just a little bit to get things to line up we can and that's that's looking pretty straight though of course, magnified like this, you see every little deviation, but from standing back a foot or so, that looks really straight. So let's go ahead and I actually probably want to stick something between. I don't know if this is the, this bolt is the, we'll go through that hole or not. Yeah, it will. So let me, let me line this. Put this one of these bolts through the hole in there 
and then line these up so I know the hole between the two resistors is aligned like that and now I know when I mount this one down that the holes will align so let's hold that down and get this hole started and let me drill this one Put a bolt in the front of this one and with it going through the middle. So we're starting to get things all kind of aligned up here. And we've got one hole left to drill down here on this end. So let me put that down. In here and mark this all. Like that. And then drill this last hole that are mounting these. Wow, that one may have gotten off. We haven't drilled all the way through, so let's let's look at this. Yeah, the drill walked that way while we were drilling because the hole, the chuck was getting into this, and I had to kind of angle it, and it walked that way. <sighs> so let me look at this. What I may want to do is come back with my good center punch. Like I said, we haven't drilled all the way through yet and we can fill up that little mistake with some black paint and you'll never see it. I don't think I wanna just hit this with a hammer because it's probably gonna put a dent in the top of the chassis here that we'll have to try to get rid of. Let's see if that got enough of a mark there where I can drill. Nope. We're probably just going to have to go ahead and slot this a little bit. It's not ideal, but... That's part of hand fabricating. Sometimes little mistakes like that happen. Let's see if this will, if I can get these bolts to line up now. And make sure this thing's not super crooked. Yep, it needs a little more slot. Luckily, that's going to be up underneath that resistor. No, no, it's not. Well, we'll just have to touch that up with a little paint. Right here at the end, I boogered up the top of it a little bit. But you know what? You can't cry over spilt milk. I should have been paying a little better attention when I was drilling that hole to ensure that it wasn't walking. I think I'm going to go ahead and fudge this hole a little bit in that direction too so we don't see the edge of this hole. So let's... And really, 
you would want to drill these holes before you mount these output transformers. So if you're going to do this like I'm doing it, I mean, I should have gone ahead and done it, but I had people commenting, oh, that's dangerous. You don't want to mount those on the top. And it's like, you know what? I'm going to mount them up there anyway. And I'm going to figure out how to insulate them so this isn't an issue. And wow, we were doing so good until that happened. Nope, it needs to go this way more. I think the wire is not going to be as thick as that bolt. So I think that'll be fine. Well, that's disappointing. I usually do a little better job. A little better job than this and that. And I don't want these things to be all crooked. what I get for not just listening to myself and doing what I want. Because now that hole's not really in a good place either. And they're starting to look all crooked, which I don't like. But I also don't want a bunch of elongated holes either. We're having them all spaced way apart like that. Well, clearly what I just did is not a good way of doing that. I probably should have marked the centers of these holes and uh, maybe even removed these power, these output transformers before I tried to do this. That's disappointing. Actually, all of those holes look good. It's just this one back here is just way off. What I may end up having to do is come back and... Because those three holes all line up and this one's still way off. All I can do at this point is just slot this out, and I may have to come back and try to fill that, the end of that hole in with a little bit of epoxy or something, so it isn't ugly. Disappointing, I was that close. I was three holes, got three holes right, and then this last one, I was talking and looking at the camera, and the bit just walked off of the mark, and... I'm not going to let that just ruin the chassis, but it is disappointing. It's one of the one of the things that happens trying to video record while I'm working and pay attention to everything. But here we go. We'll try to so we'll just slot this out some more until it lines up. That's all I can do at this point. I think that'll that'll have to work. Let me go ahead and put the bolts back in here. And maybe that won't be real noticeable. Since it's down there over in that corner. Wow, that's still just way off. I can't believe that bit walked that far down that way. The other thing I could do here is slot all of these, these three other holes that way a little bit 
and move the whole little resistor package down and that might help cover up that little let me show you what I got going on here you can see the edge of this hole down here so maybe if I slot these three holes this way just a little bit then I can move it all down that way and get this right at the edge of that hole. I mean, this is this is kind of the mess you run into hand fabricating stuff and you know, little mistakes happen and you got to figure out how to resolve them or just throw the chassis away if you're, you know, too worried about being perfect. Okay, let's see if we've if we've gotten anywhere doing that. And again, part of the problem is these little resistors are so much smaller than the one ones I've worked with in the past. It just makes them hard to work with. I think that got us where we need to be. Yeah, now we can't, we don't see this little end. And those look reasonably straight. And I can see through all the holes. Let me put, somehow I, I got, when I bought these bolts, I made sure I bought a couple extras because these things are so tiny that I knew it would be super easy for one of them to just disappear. I can't even get in here to put this stupid little thing in here. My fingers are too big. If I was ever buying... I mean, I've already, I've already got these resistors, so I hate to just throw them away, but I don't think I'll ever... I'll make sure that I never buy any that are this small size again. I guess they were, when I was ordering these from Mauser, I didn't really pay attention to, you know, look at the data sheet and look at the size of these to see that these were little, little tiny ones. But there we go. I think, get these bolted down. I can't see the edge there. I do have a touch up a little bit right there where I, where the bit walked on me and kind of scraped that up a little bit. And I need to bevel these holes off. So let me do that and get these resistors bolted down. What a mess. Well, I got them both mounted and bolted down and they might be twisted this way just a little bit but they're reasonably straight, and when I'm looking at it from different angles, they look fine. Let me zoom in here. You can see there's a little heat sink compound squishing out from each end of them, and these holes line up. The next thing I need to do is I need to drill a hole here, here, and here that's large enough to put a grommet and then the wire will go through this to the underside of the amp. And then what I'm planning on doing is getting some high temperature epoxy. And once I get this all soldered up, covering up these two end terminals with some black high temperature epoxy, which will keep stray fingers off of them. If it was three or four hundred volts or even a hundred volts, I'd be probably even more concerned about doing something like that. But 
we're talking about 30 volts here, and I don't think that's going to, that's not going to electrocute anybody. So let me get to working on those holes, and I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to do those off camera because they're going to be a little tricky to do, and I really don't want to screw up this chassis being this close to the finish line. So let me get those holes drilled, and I'll show you what those look like once I get done with it. So I hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. And I'll see you soon for more 6SQ7 fun. Have a great day.